All right, hello, hello, and welcome to my newest Jaws of the Lion speedrun. I've been working really hard on this for the past couple months, like three months, uh, so I'm really excited to share uh, share my final results. Uh, just before we jump into it, I just want to say thank you to everyone out there. I've gotten 100 subscribers, and I get tons of really positive, encouraging, and just really nice comments that always make my day and make me feel good. Um, so let's let's get right into it. Um, so we're playing on Brutal Difficulty uh, with the house rule of crits and misses being plus two and minus two instead of um, instead of missing. And that's really important. It's really nice to, to know the worst thing an attack's going to do is pull a minus two. Uh, so Jaws of the Lion, originally it was a board game and they ported it to, to the digital version of Gloomhaven. When they did, they made several changes. Um, the most notable one is that levels 1, 2, and 3 are all completely different. Instead of being with tutorial levels, now they are full-blown, hope-you-don't-die missions. Um, and they can they can actually be pretty difficult. Uh, it took me a really long time to come up with consistent strategies to beat them quickly. Um, and levels 1 and 2, actually 1, 2, and 3 are all really heavily, uh, they're, they're RNG checks for sure. Uh, so going into the level, uh, we get our first road encounter on the way here, and uh, we lose some gold on the Void Warden, but gain gold on the Red Guard, which is really, really good. Um, the Black Ship is the first point where we're, that's level 3, uh, that's the first point we're really, really going to need some gold. Um, the goal is to get 60 gold on the Red Guard by then, uh, but there are only two levels to do so. So getting 15 from that road event is really, really nice. Uh, another really heavy priority is going to be earning battle goals on the Demolitionist. Uh, so right here, kill three or fewer monsters, that's not really possible, but end next to walls, that one I can definitely do. I just have to very actively make sure I always end my turn next to a wall. So it's a little bit of a pain. Um, sometimes you get really good battle goals, like um, I think it's Aggressor, the one where you just always have monsters on the field. For most of the levels, that one's really free. Uh, so level one here, uh, I just want to give you a warning. My computer absolutely hates this forest tile set, and so the frame rate is really choppy, uh, and it looks pretty bad. So if you want to skip ahead, I don't blame you. Uh, but this is the only level in the entire run that has this forest tile set. So at least there's that. The, every other level after this, there really aren't any frame rate issues. Uh, but jumping into level one, so we went into it, and then I retried. Uh, that's because we're looking for good RNG on turn one here. So there are Vermling Raiders in this first room, and basically three of their cards, they will move up into melee range, and the other five cards, they won't. Also, they can only draw seven cards on turn one. It's just a weird thing in Gloomhaven Digital. Um, they don't have access to their 85 speed card. I don't know why. Um, so I'm looking for a three and seven chance, which I did get here um, with, their, with their 30 speed move and heal. Um, Unfortunately, uh, that card is faster than my Shield Spikes, and I really want to set up Shield Spikes on the Red Guard so that he will gain Retaliate for his current Shield value. Um, but I wasn't able to do that on turn one because I had to go faster than these Vermling Raiders. So I was just able to restart the round uh, and go fast instead. So the Void Warden, really, the main reason she comes to level one here is so that she can throw the Red Guard forward so that he can open that door. But why the heck did I open that door? What does that accomplish? Well, in Gloomhaven uh, and Jaws of the Lion physical, when they ship the game, there are only a certain number of little standee tokens that they have. So Vermling Raiders only had six, which means six is the max that can spawn in the game at any point in time. And that is true for both physical and digital. So with, in three player, there are supposed to be six Vermling Raiders in the first room and four in the second, I believe. So on turn one, by opening that door, while there are still six in room one, it makes it so that the other four never spawn. So it's basically like I killed four monsters on turn one just by moving all the way across and opening that door, which is super, super nice. Uh, now on turn two here, I go for Healing Sand's bottom. That way everything has disadvantage. And so if those Vermlings had drawn one of their move away cards, uh, move and attack at range, they wouldn't have because they still would have been disadvantaged anyway. And luckily Healing Sand's is faster than all of their move and attack at range cards. Um, instead, they just drew a, a high damage card here, so I had to end up dropping a card um, to not die. Kind of unfortunate, because I'm also really trying to get as much experience on the red guard as possible, 
The only reason I bring Precision Strike is if I can consume fire, it gives me two experience. Very frequently, I will get to the black ship and be like three to four experience short from leveling up, which is really unfortunate because leveling up there makes that level a lot easier. Uh, also, on the demo, I'm trying to get experience as much as possible. That's why I use the bottom of Explosive Blitz there. It's a loss card for just a move three, um, but that one experience point, I have, I have gotten the... I have hit the experience threshold exactly before, so I will take that one experience point for playing a lost card. So we're going to get a whole bunch of retaliate here from the red guard, which is really nice. These vermling raiders are going to take a bunch of damage. We got a huge big one off on the um, on the demolitionist since everything was surrounding our red guard. Uh, and you might have noticed that our big one did five damage instead of three. That's because we had wind up set up. So the way wind up works in digital. If you have at least one charge and you do an AOE attack, it will apply the plus two damage to every target. That's not the way it works in physical. That's that's not the way the game was designed to work, but it is the way it works in in digital, and it does that with every class. So crackling air on the spellweaver or sharpened blades on the uh, hatchet, those are are both things that I use in speed runs in order to. Um, to just maximize the number of targets that I can hit with with those buffs. So it makes the big one a lot better being an attack 5 instead of an attack 3. Um, and then you can see that I, I made sure my demo, she ended her turn against the wall, but I was able to use Rubble Top to go and get two experience points by destroying that obstacle and hitting, hitting a Vermling, and then just walk right back next to the wall. I also got a huge, gigantic loot on the Red Guard and looted 21 gold. Uh, which is super super nice and level one here is is just about done this went very well very quickly um it's a little unfortunate that i can't kill these vermlings a little bit faster um but i do have crushing weight at least and i can still end against the wall and i think yeah lure the void right here the loss gets me the kill and that is it level one has been beaten in nine minutes definitely not bad uh, and that's the only level in the run that's going to use three characters. So I've messed around with using extra characters in a whole bunch of the levels, but this is the only one where it's actually faster. Um, I was thinking my settings were wrong because the frame rate was even worse than normal there. It, it felt to me. It was probably because Gloomhaven can, had been running for a while. I probably should have closed and reopened. Um, but we are now going to add a hatchet to the party i didn't mention this but one of the rules for for this speed run you're only allowed to use the four jaws classes um so i just added him in because we're going to get one gloomhaven city event throughout the entire run and then the rest are jaws of the lion events you get on the way to the level uh and we were looking for gold or experience there uh to give to the hatchet but didn't get it and then uh, we bought a chain armor on the red guard, and then after that we got like basically the best road event possible, where you get a free chain armor. Unfortunately, I had already purchased one, so instead I'm just going to sell it for 15 gold, but 15 gold is still definitely not something to complain about, especially because I got 15 gold on the first event as well. So level 2 is very similar to level 1. Um, we're looking for good RNG on the, um, on the first turn. All I need is for the Vermling Raiders to move. Um, so it's instead of being a 3 and 7 chance, I'm looking for a 5 and 7 chance, uh, which we did get here. We got the move and heal card again, which is really nice because we don't take damage. Uh, and so as soon as I open this door, I am checking the uh, Viper card to see what he is doing. So I'm going to be attacking him for 4 right here with the demo. Uh, I had to use flame shroud just to set fire so that i would get extra move on explode um, but now my demo is able to come into this room too here and one shot this viper even if i had missed out on the kill it wouldn't have been a big deal uh, because flame shroud damages enemies by two as soon as they walk adjacent to you and that viper had a multi-target card so he would have seen two targets and walked into us and just died uh, but we got a decent ish surround um we're really looking for a really good surround here. So they drew a shuffle card on turn one, so they still had all eight of their cards as possibilities on turn two here. Um, and they got a move and attack at range, which is kind of good because the Vermlings in the back will move forward, um, but nobody is going to be surrounding me. And I think it's four range on that card. So we enter the final room, the third room here. This is the extra room that wasn't in physical. Uh, and there's only one Viper in there. 
That's just because the other Vermil Invaders didn't spawn because we hit the standee limit already. So, luckily with the one shield I get here from Swift Strength, I'm basically taking no damage. This is just an attack for one from the normals, um, and the elite was an attack for three there. So I did not take very much damage, and now I have a difficult decision to make. They drew a move in melee card, which I really, really want to see. But I want to be in a place, standing in a hex, where they can surround me easily. And the traps here really are not entirely my friends. Um, so I ended up just stepping on the trap myself. I don't know if that's like objectively the best, but look at this surround I got. I mean, this surround is amazing. And I am taking a lot of damage here. Uh, luckily, I did survive with my, with my one shield here. Um, and so I'm... I'm in a little bit rough shape on the red guard here, but now I get to go for a really huge shield and retaliate. Uh, I think I lost Warrior of the Sun on a short rest there, unfortunately, um, because I only had one health, so I couldn't draw a different card to see what I would get instead. Um, but it's not that big a deal because I was able to play Healing Sand, so I'm missing out on one retaliate on all these guys, and they didn't draw. They only had one card left where they would have moved away and attacked me at range. They're 77, attack with wound. Um, but they didn't do that and draw that instead they drew their um, set a trap card which is really nice because the the demo loves loves pushing things into traps uh, so I've got one charge of wind up left here uh, and I can go for this really nice twirling stabs to hit everybody with uh, use the light for extra damage uh, I don't have flaming sickle here unfortunately for the loot um, but there's an obstacle here in the corner that the demo can blow up, and so now this is going to be an attack 5 advantage on all 5 of these targets. That feels good. <laughs> that feels really good to see. Uh, they all go down. Okay, I do have Flaming Sickle, so I'm going to go for that here. And then just one Vermling Raider left to deal with. I'm going to go ahead and pull him in just so that he uh, gets hit by this Flaming Sickle. Get another loot, 21 beautiful beautiful and one two punch i actually would have rather not get the kill with that first half because then i could have grabbed an experience point with the second half but in the end he still goes down this is a very good level one and two uh really good rng on them overall um and i'm very happy with how i played them and so now we're going into the black ship now unfortunately i didn't get an experience event on on any of my three events that i've done so far um my red guard would actually be one experience point short. Uh, oh, wow, both my characters would have been one experience point short if I had gotten a 10 XP event. That's why I'm like really, really, really pushing for every experience point possible. Um, but both of them are just level 1, which makes this level significantly harder. Um, the main thing being level 2 do does, um, I get to get one perk point to take out two minus ones from both of them. Um, but then the other really, really big benefit is... Um, just having two extra health on the red guard it makes a huge difference because it makes room one much 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 more survivable so i've got like two different big strategies here for for room one and it all depends on how much gold i picked up on the red guard uh, so i have a warhammer here which is really really nice it means i can go for a stun on turn two so i am going to save the big one um if i don't have a warhammer i have to big one in this first room um, just to do as much damage as I possibly can to kill everybody. The goal is to clear out this first room without having to use my health potion. The problem is that these um, these zealots on turn one drew their attack with poison card. So maybe I should have just abandoned the quest and reset and gotten a different card out of them. Um, because this poison means that now when I use healing sands, I'm not going to heal any. And four health going into room two would be super, super sketchy. Um, so I am going to have to use my health potion here. Um, luckily with a Warhammer though, I'm super safe on this turn. I am going to eat some Retaliate from this wolf, which kind of sucks. Um, and so I'm going to have to pop that health potion just to get rid of that poison. Uh, and then this misses out on the kill, so I get Retaliated on again. Uh, so I probably should have targeted someone else. Would have been better. Um, I went really slow on my demo here because I'm playing Piston Punch, which gives me a stun. So luckily I was slower than the um, than the Zealots, so I'm able to stun the Elite for the following turn, which is really nice. 1-2 Punch gets me a kill and a little bit of damage. And now the 
Red Guard is very fast, uh, and so I'm just going to try to pick up kills. Uh, Flaming Sickle is going to guaranteed pick up a kill on this um, on this wolf without having to worry about a pull. And then I win at 19 on the demo, which ties the Zealot's fastest card. So no matter what, my demo was going to be able to attack at range and kill the other Zealot. So I'm able to heal up a little bit here, but 5 health going into room 2 is really, really bad. Um, and so, er, well, 7, because I get a rest here. So that's not that bad. Um, so right here, I am going for, and I set a wind-up bottom, you might have noticed. So my next move is going to be doubled on the demo. And I open this door, and I am amazed, uh, relieved. Like, this is the best possible RNG. Um, there are two move four cards that the Zealots can draw, and either one of those is really, really, really good, because it means they're going to surround me. Um, and then uh, this six speed card on the wolves is really nice, because it means I don't need to pull that wolf in, so I don't suffer retaliate from him. Um, and my, my demo is still going to be able to get through. The only thing that's bad is a shield on the viper, um, but that's not the end of the world. So I definitely got good RNG here. I do have strategies um, for if I get bad RNG and the zealots stay still. That's the worst thing that can possibly happen. Um, they've got two cards where they stay still, um, but that didn't end up happening here. So I don't have to really, I don't have to use all those traps. So. Demo does a huge run through all the difficult terrain using the bottom of windup for lob charge to be an attack 7. Uh, and that, plus my explosive blitz, I'm able to pick up the kill on the viper, go invisible so that the only target they see is my red guard and they have to surround him. Which is super, super nice. Then they're fast again here, so I go for I, the biggest shield I possibly can, but I'm really, really low on health. Um, so this is extremely extremely risky and I have no heals left uh, so I go for another big one but I am not going to kill everything and this zealot having two h or one HP is really 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 annoying because this wolf dies right here unfortunately he he picks up a plus two which deals a damage to me even through my four shield um, and so now I'm in a rough spot because I'm wounded with one HP so no matter what I have to lose a card at the beginning of my red guards turn this is why if I were level two right here I would have two additional HP and I would be in great shape um, so I, I just had to drop a card there I did not have a choice um, and then I obviously have to play a heal on this turn um, so that's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, I think I do pick up the kill here. Okay, good. Demo does get the kill. That would have been really unlucky to attack for two and attack for one and not get the kill. Um, and so now we just have one room left. Uh, since I didn't have to big one in room one and I used it on my second rest cycle instead, my demo is in really, really good shape stamina wise. Um, better shape than normal. My red guard is about average. I feel like on, on average, I have to lose one card in room two, which makes this level really difficult. Uh, but I get to set up a wind up top, so my next two attacks are going to be plus two, which is really nice. And I go into the final room. I'm going to immobilize these guys, so even if they had drawn their 27 speed, move away and attack at range, um, they wouldn't have been able to get away. They still would have attacked into my three shield with my chain armor. Uh, so three retaliate on these guys with me not taking very much damage is a pretty good way to open the door And then I still have a wind up so crushing weight comes in and that's an attack for seven since this is such a small room Everything is against the wall uh, And plus one picks up a kill really nice. Unfortunately, I get a poison here um, This that's why I target the viper down in room two ASAP is just to avoid poisons because I have very very limited access to healing here so poisons are a really big deal um, but guaranteed to pick up all my kills here with twirling stabs plus my eagle eye goggles and then crushing weight picks up the final zealot so the black ship has been defeated that is the fastest I have ever completed that level because room 2's RNG was absolutely amazing um, room 1 wasn't that good but room 2 was absolutely fantastic and so now we are on to a ritual in stone uh, so this is going to be another uh, demo plus red guard level, and this time they are going to be able to level up to level 2, um, which is nice for both of them. I was thinking that I wasn't supposed to drop Flaming Sickle, um, but I finally wrote out notes and I have them like on the side. I'm playing windowed with the, with the notes over on the side, and so I keep like 
especially on card selection, I keep referencing referencing my notes, and then I try to argue with myself, like, ah, no, I shouldn't drop this card, I should do this other card instead, and I just lose time on it, which is really stupid. Um, I should just follow my notes, although following my notes makes me lose two minutes later, so my notes should be better. Uh, so we're going into a Ritual and Stone now. So this level, there are four objectives you need to destroy. They only have three health, which is nice, but they can only be hit by melee attacks. Once you destroy two, two zealots spawn. Once you destroy the final two, uh, two zealots and a uh, stone golem spawn. So I go really slow here on turn one on both my characters in the hopes that everything will move forward, which they do. Uh, so I'm able to uh, just set up here for a good position for the following turn. So I've got wind up set up on my demo for four extra damage on this turn. And then I'm going to go ahead and wound this guy and then just hit both of these with swift strength. And I'm just not going to pull um, on this elite zealot so that he will still, I can still push him into the trap with one, two punch. And with my wound and all that damage, this normal is dead. Uh, and this elite here, I get a plus two on the first hit. So he's guaranteed to die now because the trap is five damage and I have wind up. So really, really nice. And then just one zealot left to deal with and he's going to deal a little bit of damage, but not super significant. Um, I did trade out my health potion for the Doomed Compass, so my demo no longer has access to any um, any heals. There are no heals in the demo's deck at all um, until level 5, so that is a little bit rough, uh, and that's why I haven't set up Shield Spikes yet, uh, because Shield Spikes actually gives me a bottom heal, um, which is really nice. So I think that's what I go for right here. Yeah, just heal on the demo. I'm waiting on the Stone Golem to come over and join us, um, but he's just very, very slow. Uh, and he hasn't damaged himself yet, which is... Normally he's damaged himself a little bit by now. But I'm just trying to pull him up towards this trap that's right next to the Red Guard. Uh, and there we go. Finally he damaged himself a little bit, but he didn't move. So, once again, just long resting on the Red Guard and setting up a wind-up on the on the demo. I realize here that he's four spaces away from the trap, so if I move him two with my compass, and then I push him two with one two punch, I can push him into the trap, which is really nice. So nine health on this guy, uh, but five damage from the trap, and then a couple hits. I'm pretty likely to kill him here. Um, but I definitely do make a relatively major mistake here, I think on the following turn, um, which is painful to see. Um, as soon as I destroy the next objective, this one down here on the bottom, it's going to spawn two more enemies, uh, which I did know about, um, but things just did not go according to plan. So a plus two there on the, on the red guard actually gets me really nice damage, and now one two punch is actually just straight up going to kill this guy, I think. Yeah, I got amazing pulls and he just dies. Um, I don't know why I used my boots there. Using my boots there was really, really, really stupid because I want I want to be standing in the hex that I'm in right now and go for a really big lobbed charge on the zealots as soon as they spawn. And um, since I used my boots there like an idiot, I went for a long rest here so that I could get my boots back. Um, and so now I'm going to double attack this stone with the red guard, break it, and fly all the way across the room and hit with a really big lob charge into the zealots. Except my red guard pulls absolutely terrible. Attack for two, attack for two, and he only dealt one damage. And so now I didn't break the stone, and I can't go for my really big lob charge all the way across the room. Because um, that's in my discard, and I'm not going to short rest and, and lose a card just to get that back. So I'm in bad shape all of a sudden here. Lob charge would have given me an attack for six, and then um, crushing weight would have been an attack for five. So I just would have needed like a plus one on both to one shot the elite there. Um, uh, but yeah, instead that doesn't happen. And so now my plan is just completely thrown off because of those terrible pulls. And so I, um, I did not react very well on my red guard here. Um, my, I like, I really wanted to go for a twirling stabs, but I wanted to lob to charge into that hex. But the zealots are faster than my demo, of course. So everything here is is just going horribly. Um, and so I don't know why I stepped up here uh, and pulled the normal in. I should have done this in reverse. I should have gone down below them and pulled the elite in 
and then that way they both would have hit the red guard and I could have lobbed a charge onto the elite instead of onto the normal. Really, really bad play here. Uh, and then I realized my mistake almost almost immediately. Um, and so I eat a curse here, which actually really hurts because um, the minus two is, is basically a miss for the, for the red guard. And so now my lob charge is just gonna be an attack for five. I do have wind up now, so it is seven, but I miss out on the kill. I didn't want to use my other wind up charge just to deal one damage. Um, I probably should have just broken that obstacle right there though, um, or the objective. Destroying that objective, um, it wouldn't spawn the final wave yet, not until the one on top is, is down. And so, I don't know, I saved the, I saved the wind up charge so that I could hit the elite right here. Um, but they got their 19 speed card again, which is just kind of crazy. So that's now three curses in my red guards deck. Um, at least, though, it does give me the chance to use my chain armor and finally get a retaliate to kill this one HP guy. So just have to deal with the elite here, uh, which I still don't even do. That's just really, really bad attack modifier pulls on this level. Made it way closer than it needed to be. Then of course I draw one of those curses there, so it essentially did act as a miss instead of just a minus two. Uh, so I have a lot of cards on my red guard, but my demo is getting really, really close to dead. Um, only four cards left, and I will be playing one more loss. So I should have just done an attack two into the stone here. I was nervous that I was going to pull another curse card since I had so many extra, and so I just went for the one guaranteed true damage. Um, but I need to break this stone, and I draw another curse. <laughs> so actually, it, it, it did work out, um, the, the one guaranteed true damage. At least it did something. Finally, I break the stone here. And so um, I am on my final turn now on the demo. I do have wind up set up, so um, I'm going to go for huge shields on the red guard. Unfortunately, I didn't have the time to long rest, so I could have one additional shield. Um, but my demo pulls through, she draws a zero, um, which she, she, by, at this point, I do have four minus ones out of my deck, uh, so I only had one minus one and two minus twos, so I was relatively likely to draw a zero or better. Uh, so I destroyed that stone, and then I'm able to get a big one onto every enemy as they spawn. Both of these zealots are going to die, um, the only bad thing that can happen is if they draw their 27, they would move away and attack at range. Um, unfortunately, this stone golem didn't attack me, um, so he would have taken four retaliate had he attacked me, and he'd be down at three health. Um, but at least on this turn, he deals a damage to himself, so I'm able to just step right over here, eat this fire to throw up that shield, pull him into the trap. He will take one true damage from uh, retaliating on me, five from the trap, and then one from his turn, and he goes down. So it ended up being really close in the end. Uh, Demo was on its last turn. Redguard had like two or three turns left, but I pulled through and won. So a, a slow Ritual in Stone for sure. This definitely could have been like two minutes faster, maybe even three. Um, but with the pace that this run is on, I'm happy enough with a win. And for the most part, I didn't play horribly. I just got some bad luck on the attack modifier pulls. Uh, which is going to happen again later. But we are on to the Hatchet's first level. Um, just want to make sure I get all my cards right going into it. And we are going to say hello to the Blood Tumor. So Blood Tumor is a boss we're going to face twice in this run. Um, it has a pretty unique property. Anytime anything suffers any damage, once, once the boss has been revealed, anytime anything suffers damage, the boss heals that amount. One thing that's really annoying, the card knockout the support on the Demolitionist, it, it says, like, this target cannot be healed for the remainder of their turn, uh, but it just doesn't work on the Blood Tumor. The Blood Tumor still heals, uh, which is really annoying. Uh, so, I want to get back to the Blood Tumor ASAP. The only goal here is to kill the Blood Tumor. So... I'm just going to, I'm absolutely mad dashing to the back. I don't need to worry about these Chaos Demons at all. Uh, they did deal pretty significant damage to my hatchet here. Uh, and then the traps in the first room are not damage traps, but in the second room they are. So I take quite a bit of damage stepping on those traps there. Um, 
and but the boss is down to 22 health so I have to lose a card here instead of taking damage to that trap otherwise I would have healed the boss for five which would be really really bad um, but I'm able to go invisible on both characters and so I don't really need to worry about much my the battle goal that I got here um, one of them on the demo was completely impossible the other one was to loot a treasure chest which is like maybe theoretically possible um, if my hatchet is able to pick up the kill then my demo could run over to that chest over there uh, but also my hatchet's goal was to never kill an elite or a boss so I really want the demo to kill the boss for the hatchet's battle goal but I want the demo to pick up the chest for its battle goal so overall it ends up working out so that my hatchet is going to get his battle goal and demo will pick up the kill here so this level is a lot easier with an invisibility cloak um, it's still possible to rush this final room and kill the boss ASAP without it uh, you do just need slightly good luck um, but invisibility cloak kind of makes this level trivial because we're able to just run to the end and one shot the boss so that is the first instance of the blood tumor and the second one will be pretty similar uh, and you can see why the hatchet definitely has a place in this run uh, <laughs> him being able to unfortunately he has to stand still and it happens at 60 speed but being able to do an attack for 20 is really really nice and uh, so I have hit the level threshold that I wanted for this level I am level 3 on the demo uh, I think I got like two experience goals um, two experience road events at, by this point um, I'm one point short from leveling up on the hatchet, but I wouldn't level up the hatchet anyway. I'm going to stay at level 1 and level 3 for a really long time, because this is the strongest my characters can get without increasing the difficulty of the monsters anymore. So I don't want to... I, I'm not going to level up until I reach a level where I really, really, really need a certain specific card. Uh, so it's... Uh, it's the tables level um tainted blood uh is when i am going to finally level up my characters uh so on to corrupted research uh the goal in this level is to destroy these eight red growths that you can see on the wall these black sludges um terrible terrible enemies they're really difficult to deal with they've got two cards where they're just going to deal three true damage to whatever's closest to them, no matter what. And it goes through uh, it goes through invisibility, and it has infinite range. So I really need to kill them absolutely as fast as possible. But there are three rats on the other side of this room who don't have any way to reach me. They have no ranged attacks. There are obstacles lined up in this in this room, and so they will never reach me. So I love this strategy here, I do. I, I push the two black sludges together and I um, go for the most AoE possible on the hatchet. It's not really a very AoE heavy class, but it definitely works here. Um, disorienting barrage bottom for three true damage and then close cuts top for an attack three onto both. And so I'm able to pick up one kill and then just one more black sludge to deal with and then from that point, this level is fairly self-explanatory. I'm just going to be trying to destroy all these red growths from this side of the room while the rats just stand there and do nothing, which is really, really nice. So the whether this level goes fast or slow basically just comes down to what attack modifiers I pull. Um, for example, like if I get a plus two right here on the, on the hatchet, he's just going to destroy his immediately. Uh, but I do not, yeah, I, I pull poorly. Uh, I also want to get gold on the hatchet, as much gold as possible. Um, my main, main, main goal is to have a pair of boots before explosive evolution. That is definitely like the next really, really hard level in the run is explosive evolution. Uh, and boots help significantly on it. So uh, I need to pick up 20 gold on the hatchet across three levels. Unfortunately, both of the blood tumor levels that I do I just rush the boss and kill it ASAP, so there's no goal to pick up. So I really need some good road events um, on the hatchet to have a chance at getting that goal. Ugh, and I still keep pulling poorly, so not quite destroying these objectives, but um, this is why having level 3 on the demo is really good, because now I have two ranged attacks that I can be doing. Um, was well, 3, because firebombs is a target too. Um, and then it synergizes really, really well with wind up. Um, 
making them attack fours instead of just attack twos. So, in really good shape for this level, just need to destroy this final objective. Op yeah, objective. I need to get both my characters on the same rest cycle um, so that they are ready to go at the same time. Uh, I think, yeah, I just need to get wind up set up and then I will be ready to storm the final room and there are just three objectives to kill in there and then I will be ready to go. So set up wind up right here and then we're going to get to use explosive blitz for the fun part for the first time. Uh, as soon as I've broken this. And now once again, we're looking for decent attack modifier pulls. Um, the bottom of the explosive blitz, since I'm opening a door, I'm just stunning everything in free range, which is everything in this room, which is really, really nice. So I get complete and total safety here. I use extra lift just because it's a move four. I, I don't really... I mean, no reason not to. The level's basically done. I really, really, really want to see a plus one on one of those two attacks, um, and then I can destroy destroy one of the objectives with it. But unfortunately, I don't, um, and so now it's going to take me two turns from here to win instead of just one. Uh, I do still have a charge of wind up, so this fire bombs is an attack four onto both. Um, so I am able to pick up the kill that I missed. Um, but if I had just done more damage onto that one up top, I would have been able to firebombs this objective in the back here and destroy it with power pitch. Power pitch still could kill it with a plus two, but yeah, my, my pulls on this level were not good. So we basically knew that that was going to happen. But one, one objective left, uh, this level is obviously a relatively easy victory. So that is two relatively easy levels in a row uh, and then this third this third one the next one will be the third uh, well it's going to be hatchet and demo again once again we're just trying to kill a blood tumor it's basically the exact same as the first blood tumor we did except the level is a little bit smaller a little bit easier um, but I'm in a really unique position um, so right now I want to get all of my cards set up for explosive evolution, just because if I make a mistake on them, I might notice it in this level, because uh, cards don't particularly matter too much. Be able to pick up a poison dagger, which is really, really nice, um, especially because a lot of the time the demo is doing multi-hits, like one-two punch, um, or like lobbed charge, hitting something and then attacking it with the top two. So having a poison dagger is really, really good. Um, and I get five gold here which i'm able to give all to the hatchet and so now he is one gold pile short of being able to buy a pair of boots which is a, like i cannot express like the difference in win rate <laughs> between having boots and not having boots like it's probably at least a 20 percent win rate increase uh if i just have boots for the next level so i just need one gold pile that is a lot harder than it sounds because the only gold pile that i can pick up without losing a significant amount of time like at least a minute is the one that the boss drops but when the hatchet attacks a boss he wants to use double throw which is a bottom so I can't move after I hit the boss so I'm trying here to kill the boss without having to use double throw bottom which is definitely sketchy it just means that I need big damage pulls here on my demo so she goes as fast as she can at 19 which is Luckily, fast enough to outspeed these zealots here. Um, Hatchet is just doing his good old extra lift movement to get to the back and go invisible. Uh, I choose to lose a card here instead of taking this wound damage because I don't want to heal the boss. I'm thinking at this point, like, I need a little 26 damage without using double throw. Um, but luckily, I get a plus two right here. If I had just gone really poorly on my attack modifier pulls right here, I, I would have just gone for the double throw and just... Uh, sacrifice the gold pile but I figure 16 damage I should be able to get with a power pitch is attack 6 add the favorite is attack 9 add a power potion is attack 10 and then so 10 damage on the hatchet's turn 6 damage on the demo's turn should definitely be doable uh, unfortunately it means that I'm going fast on the demo here uh, so that I can get crushing weight bottom um, Oh, because one two punch would have been slower than my hatchet, and obviously I had to go faster with the demo so that the gold pile would be there for the hatchet to pick up. But I get just enough damage that with this guy being poisoned, um, 
all I have to do is lose cards on this damage that the demo takes so that the boss doesn't heal, and it will be a guaranteed kill, even with a minus two. So, very close and scary in the end, but I do manage to kill the boss and loot the gold token on the hatchet. So now I will have boots for the next level. Uh, I think I also got the perk on somebody, but I'm not I'm not sure who that was. I know I was I was also thinking about trying to make sure I got the perks on them during that level. And now explosive evolution. If you have played this level, oh man, you know how difficult it can be. So this is the blood horror, the evolved version of the blood tumors. Um and it is it is horrific, all right. The the boss itself is immune to damage until you have killed all of the zealots in the level. Now, when you hear kill all of one certain type of monster in a level, my brain immediately goes to, ooh, standee limits. We can try to open doors early and prevent monsters from spawning. Nope, there are only six zealots in this level, so they hit the standee limit perfectly. So we can't do that. We can't rush to the end and despawn things. So we have to kill these zealots as fast as we can. Meanwhile, the entire time, the blood whore is going to be chasing us. And the best part is that the blood whore loves to re-summon dead zealots and turn them into living corpses. So I do a little bit of damage on this guy on the bottom with my demo, and then it is just enough that my hatchet is able to pick up this kill, and I just use pushes on both of them, and I'm very particular about using those two uh, hexes for the pushes. That is because these red auras, those those show zealots that are able to be revived by the boss. Uh, and the boss didn't revive on turn one, which is actually really good RNG. I would rather him hit me than revive, uh, just because now I don't have to deal with a living corpse on turn two here. So both my characters are able to uh, finally pick up a little bit of gold. And Crash Protocol gets its first use of the run here. Um, it's actually pretty decent in this level. A lot of the rooms are small, so I get the plus two bonus damage for attacking an enemy who's adjacent to a wall. Uh, and now we have one living corpse in here. And then the boss is going to spawn a second one. So they're going to start chasing me. Luckily, living corpses are very slow. They don't have a lot of movements, and they do have a move zero. Um, so they don't always catch up. So. I have to make sure that I use my push cards in this way and use that specific trap because now with the, with where that zealot died, the boss is going to spawn the zombie on the other side and leave me just a beautiful corridor that both my characters can run through and escape into this next room. So this right here is why I needed boots because now my hatchet is able to reach the following room instead of being stuck in this second room here. So, and once again, I can't damage the boss until all of the zealots are dead, and we've got two more rooms of zealots to deal with. So the really nice part about having boots is that I'm able to get an attack and the favorite into the zealot right here. So that's, I think I dealt six damage there. Um, six extra damage that boots wouldn't have given me. And I would just be stuck in the previous room without the boots. So I'm going to go ahead and go invisible on both characters here. That's just because the demo has to rest. She only has nine cards and we're four turns in. So she has one left. So she has to rest. Uh, and so the hatchet might as well just rest at the same time. I could just do like an attack two on him and get a little bit of damage. But it really would not be worth it. So I go for the long rest on both the characters here while I'm invisible. This way I'll get my boots back on them and... Um, I get to pick the card that I lose because this level can be really difficult and if you lose the wrong card on a short rest you, you can just drop, you can just die so need to kill this zealot ASAP but I also want my demo to get set up for the final room so she's got crash, crash protocol set up right now three charges left on it uh, luckily, luckily I got that kill, I probably should have just used the extra damage from fancy hat um, but this way I'm able to pick up the favorite right there which is really nice so I've got three charges of Crash Protocol left. My next three attacks targeting enemies adjacent to walls will deal two extra damage. I set up Wind Up, so my next two attacks will deal two extra damage. And so that turns Fire Bombs into an, from an attack two into an attack six. And then I'm also standing in this hex specifically because it gives my lobbed charge an attack five onto this Zealot right here. And I get to push him into a wall with, with lobbed charge. 
So he only has six health left. Now Firebombs is going to be an attack for six onto both of these targets. I get the plus two to one shot the full health zealot and I also kill the other zealot. And all of a sudden this level is looking like it's in great shape. All I have to do is deal 30 damage left to this boss. I do not use the favorite here because I'm going to double throw next turn. Uh, so instead of it dealing three damage this turn, it'll deal six damage on the following. And I just need to get the 28 health remaining on this guy. This level is so much harder than the previous ones. Um, but overall, I got really, really amazing RNG here. Um, able to get just a little bit of a poke, and he's next to a wall, so this uses my third and final crash protocol charge. Uh, and I have my compass with this other trap that <laughs> that managed to stay put, and luckily the boss just didn't teleport away on the previous turn. It would have just taken me one turn more to kill him, but um, I would have had to like catch up with my hatchet, and it would have just been a pain overall. So, living corpses all stood still this turn, being good boys, and a minus two, he would still survive, but I pulled a zero. Explosive evolution is done. That is way by far the fastest I've ever completed that level, um, and every like every part of my strategy just lined up perfectly there. So, super super happy with how that level went because it is a really really hard one. Probably like I would say like maybe two percent of my runs that I start are able to get all the way past explosive evolution. And on to the gauntlet. So Void Warden is coming back. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I actually deleted the Red Guard. Um, he is he is gone. He is in the ether. He won't be playing any more levels. He does have like basically the best AOE of all of the classes, and he's obviously the tankiest. But that's just he's a little bit too slow. Like all of his retaliating, it takes a long time. Um, they just put so many enemies in the first three missions that he's basically required for them. Um, but the gauntlet, so this level is really cool. Um, there are three different rooms, and in the three different rooms, the three different, the, the traps do super different things. Uh, so in this first room here, all of these traps are AoE traps. So instead of just that hex, it's that hex and all adjacent hexes. Um, so all of these are, are five damage traps that hit every hex around them. So I use my compass to bring the elite down. And then I run all the way over to the wall to push this guy so that he will be adjacent to a trap. So now he will die uh, as soon as anyone steps on that trap that's right next to him. And uh, Void Warden loves making enemies move. So that's one AoE trap to get some nice damage. Now I can just move this elite in between these other two traps. Move this black sludge onto this one trap for some AoE damage. And then my final loss card to kill <laughs> two more black sludges so that is three black sludges down in one turn which is absolutely amazing and now i will just uh go for the kill on this final black sludge in this room i just need to go fast on my void warden and i want to set dark um so that i will have extra move on my lure the void tell an enemy to move uh, so it'll be a move three instead of just a move one so i use that poison it's Sure, the poison like does some damage, but um, this guy was guaranteed to die being pushed in the trap anyway. I really only use that card just because it sets dark. And now we are going into room two. So room two, the traps at the end of every turn, they're basically on a conveyor belt. Uh, at the end of every turn, except for the first one for some reason, um, the traps just move across. They move, well, I guess it's going to be this way. Um, they move left to right. So I go ahead and add another trap to the mix with my Demolitionist. And then this is the first time this has ever happened to me, but the Ancient Golem moves three. Uh, the, the Elite Ancient Golem in the back moves three, which means that he's just right next to all of these traps. And so I go ahead and decide to um, lure the Void on the Elite instead of on the Normal. Um, it's gonna be, I'm dealing 13 damage in traps here. So I could have killed the Normal. Um, but only one health left on the Elite is really, really nice. So, Void Warden has a ton of Lost Cards that can be really good, um, and so I think I just decide to go ahead and play a Lost Card here just to get a Wound. Um, yeah, that is what I go for. Um, so I can just Wound that Elite and just kill him. Like, it's a Lost Card, yeah, but it's worth it to just have him dead and not worry about him. 
And then it also has another benefit in that it sets dark. So I just rested, so I got my Lure of the Void back, which is a move three, and I just set dark again. So these traps in this second conveyor belt are about to line up perfectly so that I can kill this, uh, this final stone golem in this second room second stone golem i don't know i can kill this guy on the next turn by walking him into two five damage traps and then we just have one room left so you can really see that the void warden in this level i mean she's amazing uh, that is so satisfying i mean how much damage did she deal with traps in this level <laughs> and forced movement it's it's actually a little bit absurd so i just need to get both my characters in position go ahead and get a wind up set up because why not throw a bless into the demo because why not unfortunately i can't poison any target here so i couldn't uh, i could have used black moon top uh, to poison the demo and set dark um, but i didn't do that so my characters are going to go in now luckily with rubble i can just jump over those traps and not have to worry about them and then they put this wonderful obstacle right here for me to go ahead and destroy and um hit this chaos demon this is the only chaos demon that i actually fight in the entire run um there were two earlier on the blood tumor missions, but I just completely ignored them. And demo goes in, might as well just go invisible. I think I do eat true damage from the um, black sludges here, but I didn't have to fight the chaos demon, which is nice. So just lose a card on the void warden to walk through those traps. No big deal. I could have bought a pair of jump boots, but honestly, it's not worth the time. It's, it's more worth it to just take the damage. And the... Um, Oh, so in this final room, these traps, at the end of every turn, they move closer um, to your characters. So the Black Sludges played Super Ball here, and they set the dark for me on the previous turn. And there were actually two um, two traps on that hex. That's why that guy took 10 damage, um, just because of the way the traps had moved. Uh, so Firebombs is going to hit both of them, kill the Elite, and now just one guy left to deal with and I could use traps to kill him um, I don't know why I didn't instead I decided to step on the trap myself uh, which was not my best idea uh, but it worked we've got a ton of stamina left in this level so you know the demo <laughs> was going to deal eight damage no matter what but stepping on the trap I was able to go ahead and use the attack from gift of the void which is not something I do very frequently and then this treasure chest is a trap but um, there was a gold pile there, so I wanted that piece of gold. Uh, my, I'm super, super low on gold in this run. My, my demo normally has a lot more. Um, all of the road events, I had gotten a lot of gold on my hatchet, and so I wanted, um, or on, not on my hatchet, on my red guard in the first couple levels, so I probably should have split that between the demo a little bit, uh, cause she's really behind on items. Right here, I'm actually a little bit panicked, um, because in the following level, I need a throwing hammer for my strategy, which costs 30 gold on the on the demo, and I do not have that. I'm 10 away, and I am not picking up three gold piles in this level. Also, this I there was some foreshadowing earlier. Um, this is the level that I just completely my notes were just wrong, and I trusted my notes, and I shouldn't have because my notes I'm I'm supposed to have disorienting barrage for this level. So I had to abandon and, and retry and get it. This level can be really, really weird, and I've lost it before. Um, I just I didn't want to mess with, with not having Disorienting Barrage. So it's like a minute and a half, a minute 45 seconds of time lost to, to abandon and go back to town, but I didn't want to lose. So this is Beguiling Sewers. Um, there's, there's a split path here between uh, this level and an escape level. Um, completely honestly i really need to test the escape level and see if i can get strategies that are faster for it i played it one time when i was very first initially routing and it was hard <laughs> and so i was like yeah i'm just gonna do the other one uh so beguiling sewers here these pillars have retaliate three uh retaliate at any range but if you destroy an enemy or if you hit it with uh suffer damage they don't retaliate so the bottom of Disorienting Barrage on turn one there gives me six free true damage into the pillars, which is really, really nice. And then I set up a windup and I use level with the demo to just one-shot her pillars so that she takes no retaliate damage. I completely flubbed the order of my turns here. Um, 
the hatchet was supposed to go first and destroy his pillar and then the demo was just supposed to destroy hers and then use blob charge to run to her pillar and basically break it um I, but i i flubbed the order and i went first on the hatchet and so now my demo is super super far away and i think i don't have rubble at this point so i don't have that top movement and jump um Luckily, though, Fire Bombs gives me a little bit of damage, and so now I just need 9 damage to destroy that pillar in her room, and Hatchet is guaranteed to pick up the kill on his because he has an attack 14 using his Power Potion and Double Throw. So even though I don't have the favorite, I left the favorite on the previous pillar, um, he is guaranteed to pick up his kill. So I just need to deal 9 more damage. So this level, it could have gone faster, and then I lost a lot of time through um, having to go back to town. Um, but nine damage in a turn is pretty doable for the demo. Her perk deck at this point is amazing. Um, no minus cards. The only minus card is what is normally the miss. Um, so one minus two, but no other, uh, no minus ones. Uh, but I purposely kept the four zeros in the deck. I could have removed them at this point, but I haven't taken them out just because they decrease the odds of me drawing that minus two. Um, especially in these upcoming levels, uh, Toxic Harvest and Tainted Blood, there are zealots who love to go at 19 speed and curse you. And if I get like three or four curses in the deck, I really, really do not want to be pulling those. Um, so having those four zeros reduce the odds of that happening. So finally able to get some perks on the hatchet. I think just now he finally got all four of his minus ones removed, which is pretty, pretty late. Um, but I just was getting really unlucky with battle goals. Um, I think overall, like in general for this whole run, I got pretty unlucky with battle goals and got relatively unobtainable things. Right here, I mean, I was either going to lose reputation or lose gold. So that was just a really bad road event to get. Um, and so now I'm in trouble. I'm, I'm really in a rough spot here because I do not have my uh, throwing hammer on the demolitionist. So this level, Toxic Harvest, is really interesting. If a zealot ends their turn next to, or not their turn, if at the end of a round a zealot is adjacent to a viper, it will turn that viper into blood imps. If it's a normal viper, it's one elite blood imp, and if it's an elite viper, it's two elite blood imps. So elite blood imps are way, way, way more dangerous than vipers. So I really need to avoid them them spawning at all. The way I normally do that on turn one here is I use I do close cuts on the hatchet the way I did and hope to pick up two kills. Unfortunately, he got a minus two, so that didn't work. Um, and then I use fire bombs with a throwing hammer to stun either the viper or the zealot in the back here, these, these two elites, so that they don't end their turns next to each other. Luckily for me, though, the... Um, the elite zealot did not draw a move card. He drew a stand still and attack at range. So I was able to just use my compass to push him to the back. I like to save the compass for the second room, um, but since I didn't have throwing hammer, I had to go for the compass. Um, now at this point, I mean, it, it looks like it should be really easy. Just kill an elite viper and an elite zealot with my two relatively buff characters. It's a lot harder than, it, than you would think. Um, Luckily, I did play Explode here, so I'm able to eat the fire, which means this Zealot is not going to be in range to hit the Hatchet, which is really nice. And then I move both my characters up so that the um, so that they will never group together, uh, and they can't do their ritual of spawning Blood Imps, which would just be horrible. Um, really unlucky that the Viper goes fast here and sets up a shield, um, but since he does that, I decided to go ahead and just focus on the on the elite zealot here because uh, I didn't want to attack into shield and miss out on a kill so I think my hatchet here I'm pretty sure he does pick up the kill on I just need a minus one or better yeah and then care package a heal one isn't amazing but removing a poison and a wound is is definitely definitely worth it then here um I would I would like to set up the favorite top, but my demo is going to spend a long time getting set up before we go into the next room. So the favorite bottom is actually something I end up playing a lot here, 
just because getting a wound on a snake, it's really easy on turn one for like one of the two normal snakes to survive with one HP. Um, so the favorite top is, is a really good, or bottom is a really good way to just pick up that kill um, if I need to use it. And I'm not really losing any time because both my characters need to spend one turn here getting set up. Uh, so I will set the wind. Yeah, set the wind with power pitch. Just took me a second to remember. This level, I, I worked on it really hard. I think the day before I did this run, um, but I didn't have anything written down. I'm really bad at following notes and I always just double, or I always second guess them. So I don't have any notes. I just have all of the strategies in my head. I just have notes written out for the cards to bring to each level and they were wrong anyway. So, <laughs> but I've got the wind set up here. Uh, it just takes a long time to load this room because it's a huge room. And so we're able to come in and do some relatively decent damage into this elite here. Go ahead and give him the axe. Um, and luckily, I have invisibility cloak, which makes this, this second room way more consistent here. I go faster than 19 on both of my characters. That way I outspeed all of the zealot cards. The only card the vipers or zealots have that outspeed me is that uh, 11 speed stand still and shield on the vipers and that obviously is not an issue uh, so i just am trying to clear this room front to back as soon as possible so i've got wind up and crash protocol set on my demo and obviously i've got the favorite for my hatchet so we just focus the elite on turn one here as soon as we enter and then uh, fire bombs here i just need a zero to kill this guy up top and then this guy down here He's adjacent to a wall, so he gets crash protocol, so he's guaranteed to die even with a minus two. Now I have a lobbed charge with my boots for a move six all the way to the other side of the room. Unfortunately, I don't have wind up anymore, and he's not adjacent to a wall, so I don't get crash protocol bonus. But I got a plus two, and he dies, which is really nice. And we started this turn invisible, so we went super slow. And now, all of a sudden, this room just looks really, really easy because of the way we were able to get set up ahead of time. But I promise this level is difficult. Like, this is one of the hardest levels in the run, and it's really easy for things to go super, super wrong. Uh, and I was really nervous about it since I had the wrong, um, since I didn't have the throwing hammer on either character. Um, I totally picked the wrong target there. I should have targeted the Viper because um, it would be it would be easier for me to pick up the fav yeah, the favorite and then throw it again. Um, but Luckily, this snake here is against the wall, so one two punch uh, is an attack for four and an attack for three, and then with the crushing weight damage, that's just a guaranteed kill. But um, yeah, my, my hatchet can't really pick up his axe here, which kind of sucks, and so <laughs> it takes way longer than you would expect to kill this one stupid elite viper, um, especially with him doing shields, and like get, my demo can't really even get close, but we do pick up the kill on him eventually. Eventually. Um, I do wish I had my favorite, but I think he dies this turn. Please tell me he dies this turn. Okay, yeah, he should die here. And I get an extra perk point on the demo going into Tainted Blood, um, the next level. So this, this is another really difficult one. Um, and it's, it's difficult to explain. <laughs> um, but before we go into it, this is the level uh, that I was talking about earlier where we really need to uh, buff up our characters a little bit. So we've been playing at level 1 and level 3 this entire time just because I didn't want to increase the monster difficulty. But this is the point where it is worth it to level up um, because I can go all the way to 3 and 5, which hits me to the next threshold. Um, you just take your character level and divide it by two to average. So three and five gives me eight, averages to four. Then you divide that number by two, which is two. Um, and that is the monster level you play against. So I would be facing monster level two on normal difficulty. Since we're playing plus two difficulty, it is um, monster level four. Um, so monster level four is definitely reasonable. Um, the really nice part about the difference between monster level three and four is that zealot damage does not increase their health goes up i think by two um and then maybe more for elites but their damage does not increase so i'm fine with increasing the difficulty uh, because it's it's not it's not really making it that much harder so i picked up sharpened blades on the hatchet 
Um, that's because it gives me access to a move six. If I consume wind, it's a move six, which is really, really nice for this level. Uh, and then I also need it um, in the following level in mixed results. Uh, and then I'm able to get a couple things on the demo. She gets uh, mech suit, her level five card. Um, what is that? Oh, and extra fuel, which is like a crushing weight, but it also wounds. So that is, those are a couple of really nice pickups. This dang zealot goes fast here and puts a curse in my deck, which I hate. Like, that is a horrible start to the level. Um, because I will be using the card level many times in, in this level to destroy uh, objectives that have 6 HP. So if I draw a minus, I miss out on the kill. But as long as I don't, I kill it. So the thing that makes this level difficult... Uh, it's a lot easier on two player. The more characters you have, the harder the level gets. But so this table that's in this room, um, if you if you fail, if you don't destroy it, if the table is still there at the end of the round, it will spawn a black imp. Now, which tables spawn black imps is based on uh, party size. So since I only have two characters, that table is never going to spawn a black imp. In the second room, the table in the front and the table in the back will both spawn black imps. So I need to destroy those as fast as possible, but the one in the middle, I don't have to worry about. If there is a black imp close to a zealot at the end of the round, then the zealot will turn the black imp into a blood imp. And so this level has an infinite number of monsters, and they can, they can really scale to the point where it is like impossible. Uh, so, I use Sharpen Blade's bottom to get a move 6 to go all the way to the other side. Then Double Throw is my best multi-target attack. It's only an attack for 3. Um, but with the Favorite and a Power Potion, I actually pick up a kill on both tables. Um, I play Firebombs here uh, on the demo, planning for her to have to kill the, the closed table, which is why I use the Favorite on the far away table. Um, but... Since the hatchet pick up both the kills, now I can just use all of my attacks on these zealots. Um, so I went for the mech suit bottom first, just because that way I got an extra charge of wind up. I got to use it on three attacks instead of just two. Um, and then I went invisible on the hatchet uh, so that he wouldn't take any damage. Um, and it's a good time for him to rest. I used a stamina potion on the demo, which is why their rest cycles are, are different at this point. If, I really wish there's a way for me to kill both of them. Like, extra fuel bottom gives me an attack one, which would kill this one HP guy, but it's just, there just wasn't, there just wasn't a way for me to, to get it to, to all work out correctly. Um, so, unfortunately, that guy's still alive with one HP, and I made a really stupid mistake on this following turn here. Um, basically, I'm, I'm in a good spot because this middle table here isn't going to spawn any black imps since I'm only on two player. So I need to just kill these zealots. So, and my hatchet's full health and he has a health potion. So I should have just rushed onto my favorite, picked it up and then thrown it the following turn. But instead, for some reason I went slow, which was really stupid because now I can't pick up my favorite because um, that guy's standing on it. now. The only way that would have happened is if they drew the one exact card that they did where they move and attack at range, but still, I should have I should have just gone fast instead of going slow. Um, rookie mistake. And then here it's it's hard to pick a card to lose because like I really want everything. I need a lot of movement to get there are four rooms that each have a table in them. Um, so I'm gonna need a ton of movement to go between all of them, but I also need my ranged cards so that I can attack both zealots, and I need levels so that I can destroy tables. It's it's really hard to pick a good card to lose on the demo here. Uh, but I'm sending her all the way across the room so that she can multi-target with firebombs, and we finally kill that guy who had one health, and we're able to get this guy. I think he dies here. Okay, good. So I'm able to get my favorite back, so in the end, I probably only lost like one turn. Maybe I didn't even lose any turns. It just it felt really bad <laughs> to have him standing on my axe. And so now I've got um, I've I've got an interesting dilemma. So these these next four rooms they are not doors. They don't open by touching them. They open automatically once you destroy this final table, which is why I've left it here, sitting at three HP for so long. 
when I destroy the table, all four of these doors are going to open, and the room in the top right and the room in the bottom left will both start spawning black imps at the end of the round. So, I need to destroy three tables in the same turn to prevent them from spawning those imps. So I do that by using Lobbed Charge. So my demo has to go for the top right room. If she goes in towards the bottom left room, Lobbed Charge isn't going to give her the damage because the game wants you to walk through walls, even though you can't do that. Um, here, it's just like a, a bug with digital where like sometimes it won't show you all of the hexes you can move to. I was really concerned. Uh, but I draw my minus two. So with Wind Up, I move five and I attack for... I attacked for seven, but I drew my minus two, uh, which is really, really bad because now that table is going to spawn a black imp at the end of the round. So what I decided to do was check my hatchet's damage pulls here. So uh, my first attack gets a minus two as well. So both of my characters have a minus two here, which is really bad. And then my next attack is a plus one. So I know if I restart the round, my damage pulls are going to be in the exact same order. That's that's just the way it's it's a deck of cards. So when you restart the round, the deck of cards is in the same order. So instead of having my demo break the table and then run and try to break her table, I flip it and I have my hatchet use his repeat shot, which I know gets a minus two, but three damage is enough to destroy the table and power pitch top to destroy his table. Unfortunately, that means he had to play two losses to break his tables. Uh, and so now he's really, really short on stamina. And so Demo is able to go and she gets a plus two because that's what she drew on the first attack when she destroyed her first table. And then the next attack would be the minus two. Um, but that plus two was the shuffle card. So minus two is not what I pulled next, although that was what I was planning on pulling next on the Demo was the minus two. So I just need to kill these two zealots and these two final tables which sounds easy and it sounds like I should be in really good shape but it just goes a lot worse than it should and I, I played this really really horribly and th this is probably the level that I'm most upset with myself um, for how I played so I, I wanted to go slow here because I wanted the zealots to walk closer and I was hoping that I would get a mech suit bottom extra fuel top if they had like moved four moved three over towards my demo um, but that didn't happen, they stood still. So instead I had to run all the way over and just attack two. And then now I start pulling horribly. And so I restarted the round because I didn't want to, they, they drew their heal card again, which is super, super annoying. And I drew a minus two on my fire bombs. So instead of long resting on my hatchet, I decided to do an attack. And I was really hoping that I could kill both of them because I just need this attack to get a plus one which it doesn't, so I should have used the bottom of Fancy Hat to give myself um, the one extra damage, and I would have picked up the kill. And then I knew that I my first attack drew a minus two, but then my second was at disadvantage, and it drew a zero and a plus one. So if that plus one is first, then I would go ahead and kill this guy here because of the poison, but it wasn't. The zero was first. So I would completely wasted like 45 seconds by restarting that round, maybe even longer because the round actually played out. And then this guy gets a heal, and it's just horrible. <laughs> like, overall, this is so slow. These enemies have been on the field for so long. And because my hatchet was forced to play double losses in order to, to like, clear the second room and, and hit the both the tables on the same turn, um, it he, he is dead. He's not going to be able to destroy his table. Even with a plus two, he would fail to pick up the kill. Uh, I think here I finally get good damage pulls. Um, okay, yeah, I went ahead and stayed disadvantaged on this guy just because I knew I had this attack one from extra fuel. So even with the disadvantaged attack missing the kill, I do pick it up right there. And now no enemies left. I just have to break the tables. This level is so much easier on two player where you don't have to worry about the tables spawning black imps every single round. Um, but... It, there's still a lot of movement left to do in this level, uh, but luckily I have wind up. So long rest to remove this wound, that way I can never die. And then I just set up wind up bottom here. And then next turn I'll have like a move infinity. I don't even know. It's five plus two doubled is move 14 
to go all the way across the other side. And luckily, with the damage the hatchet had put in, the table goes down. So that level was slow. It was not played well. I restarted round, I think, twice just to try to make sure I picked up kills. And that was definitely the worst level. Um, the, only... the worst I performed in a level in this run. Um, Beguiling Sewers might have lost more time just because I had to go back into the level. But <sighs> mixed results. This is by far, by far, by far, in my opinion, the hardest level in the run it is it is insane um and like the number of times i've lost i've lost this level on normal difficulty in in my testing like trying to develop strategies i was losing relatively consistently on normal until i finally got um got the strategies that i have here but even then they're not foolproof and there are a lot of like branching paths that i have to go down based off of how much the rats move but if you don't know, this level is all about performing scientific experiments on rats. So turn one, there are no rats, but all of these glowing spaces are going to turn into rats. So we're going to have four normals and two elites. Um, and so luckily I do get one turn to set up. So I can get my wind up up and I can get my favorite up. And now I'm starting next to the rats so that I can go fast and just run away from them as far as possible. Um, and I want to go as far as possible, so I play the big one for free move. Um, luckily the rats only drew a move two um, basically they can draw either move two or move three on this turn and it's okay the only thing I don't want to see is their nine speed card where they're faster than me um, one of the big things that I found that really helps out a lot in this level is just bringing cards that are faster than 21 21 is the rats fastest card where they attack and so as long as I'm always faster than 21 I can generally always run away um, and not get hit by them so I targeted down both the elites. So both the elites are down below eight health, which is, which is really, really nice. Um, I want all of these rats to group up as much as possible. Um, when rat monstrosities die, they do an AOE to true damage to everything that is adjacent to them. So if I can clump them up, I can get them to AOE true damage on each other and all die really, really quickly. So I've still got a charge of windup set up on my demo. Um, and so I'm not going to attack here just so that I can save that windup charge. Uh, I do throw an attack here on the hatchet just to get another rat low. Um, but I could have used the boots to move him all the way into the corner, but then the rats would have stopped moving. Um, they would have, like one would have plugged uh, plugged the hole where my hatchet's standing right now and then the next rat would have run on the other side of the table and all of these rats would have not moved because they wouldn't have been able to find a focus but now they are all grouped up wonderfully for me to go for a nice big one um, and my stupid self I know I'm supposed to go at the big one speed here um, because my hatchet is in trouble he's surrounded by rats and they deal two true damage when they die um, for some reason I just went I went at the wrong speed, um, and I didn't get out of there. So luckily the rats are slower than me though, so I know that I can get out of there with my hatchet, go ahead and set up sharpened blades for the second wave. So now my next five attacks will get plus one and wound. And the best part of the entire run is coming as soon as I destroy this table for the strengthen. Oh, that feels so good. That is, there is nothing better than that. That that should just be on, on repeat the whole time. Okay, wave two. Wave two of these rats is different. Instead of them dealing two true damage at the end when they die, they, they turn into, I believe it's a normal blood imp. That's manageable like I can kill I can kill all of them if they turn into blood ends. but for some reason in digital if a monster dies to wound or if these rat monstrosities die to wound they don't do their AoE explosion on death and they won't in this case turn into the blood imps on death so this is why I bring sharpened blades it's my only good access to multi-target wound here and so uh, I go ahead and use the mech suit on the demo. 
uh, which is nice, getting that shield and five, have five free health. Um, I, I need Wound to kill basically all of these guys. That way they won't spawn their Blood Imps. They might, they might be Black Imps. I don't, I don't remember. All I know is that if they spawn them, it can, it can be trouble. Uh, one really, really nice thing, if you've only played physical, um, they buffed the mech suit on the demo to have it give you back all of your lost cards, when, or all of your uh, discarded cards when you play it. So playing mech suit is basically the same as taking a long rest um, and just picking mech suit as the card that you lose, but then you also get the five permanent health and the one permanent shield because you get all of your cards back and one card goes to the lost pile. The only difference between that and a long rest is you don't get to refresh items. And and if you wanted to keep mech suit for the bottom, um, then you might not play it. I think I made the wrong decision here on my hatchet. I should have gone over towards the top right, uh, just because that rat only had one health, so he was going to die soon. This way I put myself where I could be attacked by two. Uh, which was a little bit dumb but luckily this is their 21 speed card so they move extra but they only attack for three or two and then one extra if you're adjacent to one of them so i just need to kite out here and and survive and let them all die to wound and then just get ready for the final wave so that's all i'm doing here hatch is going to take a little bit of damage um i think i get lucky here though if i remember correctly and yeah they play their retaliate card so they deal no damage um which is pretty good here because the hatchet could have potentially died and had to lose a card. Um, but that wouldn't have been the end of the world either way. Um, also, I did go at 12, so I could have potentially just escaped, gotten out of their range. So I'm able to finally pick up my favorite. I think it's been there since the first wave. Um, but I finally get my favorite back for the final wave. And if you noticed, I still have one charge left of my sharpened blades. I was saving it on purpose. I made sure not to do an attack with my hatchet so that I could go for a disorienting barrage here and wound three more targets. So this final wave of rats, they are back to the original rat monstrosities where they do two AOE true damage on death. But if any target dies to that two AOE true damage, then they they turn into an elite blood imp and when i say any target it means they're allies as well so that big explosion that i did on on the first wave if i did that again right here it would spawn is it just six monsters no it's seven monsters in this wave it would spawn seven elite blood imps which would be an instant loss um so in order for this final wave to deal with it the the best way is just to deal really high single target damage and not very much aoe so i did do an aoe with the sharpened blades obviously to get some wounds out um but with favoriting one of the the normal enemies i got that guy really low and he ends up just dying to the wound by himself but i could have targeted him and killed him and had his aoe true damage only deal two damage to like a two a 10 health elite right here uh, and so the the big big goal here is just kill focus down like a single target and keep everything adjacent to them really high health so that guy was by himself this guy's down low but the guy next to him is at 10 health and finally i have my throwing hammer now so i'm able to pick up a stun probably not even worth the time it took to buy the item but this guy barely doesn't die which is a little unfortunate it means i'm not going to get the two true damage on the one next to him um, but all of a sudden, this level is is maybe almost even a little bit easy. I think I just got good luck here, um, because I'm able to uh, firebomb's bottom to blow up this table, which is really nice. Get my two damage on that rat over there and kill him, and then I think this attack misses out on the kill. Yeah, but two health, he's going to die to that wound on the following turn, and then I've got power pitch and repeat shot barely miss out on the kill so i could have killed them both on that turn with just a plus two instead but level is over my demo ends with 11 health i think she may even still have her health vote no she doesn't but still level went really really well i'm super happy with that that's my first time playing with my updated strategies in a run and so i saved 10 minutes over my over my previous run 
just because like last time I was building I was building obstacle walls with the demo and hiding behind them and targeting down things one at a time with ranged attacks and it just it was awful. Um, that level is really really hard. I I personally think it's the hardest level in the run, um, but it might just be because I was approaching it incorrectly. The hardest level may be Explosive Evolution. That boss fight can be really really difficult. Um, I made some of these levels look a lot easier than they are in actuality. Um, but just one left. Red Twilight, the final level. All we have to do is get to the end and kill a boss. Um, we finally get to go for like a, a really nice, fun Crash Protocol ride in this level. Um, it's a move three jump on the bottom. Um, but if you step on an obstacle, you get to increase the movement by one. And so it works if you've got just like a long chain of obstacles. You can just move up them and continuously increase your movement by one, uh, which is really cool. So we go for a fancy hat with our boots and extra lift uh, on turn one here on the hatchet just to get as far as we can towards the boss. Um, once again, just like all the other boss fights, all you have to do is kill the boss. So we are ignoring everything else. Unfortunately, these blood monstrosities are faster than my demo, but it doesn't really matter. Um, damage is not really a big deal here. So she's just going to use her rubble top um, to jump over them and then set up wind up for the doubled movement on the following turn. I don't know why these monsters in the second room don't act. It seems to me like they should. Like It's basically like I opened a door when I teleported into this room, so I would think that they would act, but they don't. So no complaints from me. Um, able to use sharpened blades here with my extra movement from extra lift to get over this difficult terrain and into the final room and just set up my favorite. Just <laughs> just run up to the boss and pull out my axe. I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to pull it out. But I've got, I get every time I click on one of these obstacles, I get one extra move and then the movement was doubled because I had wind up bottom. Um, I could have gone for an even longer ride and stepped on those two obstacles in the back there, but it would have um, made it easier for the monsters to reach me. So I just break those ones, but um, at this point, the level is basically free. Um, use my compass to move this guy adjacent to the wall. That way my extra fuel will deal two extra damage and wound him. So now we've got a really nice poison wound combo on him. And it's a boss fight, so you know what we are doing with the hatchet. I probably should have gone invisible here on the demo. Um, and then I could have gone invisible on the hatchet as well, and it would have skipped all the blood monstrosities turns. Um, but I didn't do that. We get a nice hit for 21 onto the boss, and just one turn left. And that is all of Jaws of the Lion. Um, so I hope you enjoyed. I, I hope that some of these strategies were maybe an inspiration and you'll you'll try some demo because the demolitionist she puts in absolute work in this speed run uh, i'm really really happy with the class i like it a lot more um, than i did when i was playing physical after doing this run um, but that is all i have for you feel free to like comment subscribe and uh coming back for the next one i don't know what i'm gonna do next i probably should do jaws of the lion easy um I, oh, part of me wants to improve this run a little bit. Um, Roland laughs. Sub two hours might be possible, but it would require a lot, a lot of really good luck and some basically perfect play. Uh, anyway, that's all I have for you. Have a good one.